And now, Funko presents Inside the Artist Studio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Inside the Artist Studio. I'm Sean. And I'm Ben. And we're excited to have another episode. Indeed, here. indeed. More things to talk about in all, all Funko art and all that. Absolutely. And uh, we've kind of brought some stuff from the beginnings of Funko mm -hmm. to kind of talk about today. And, and I think that takes us to our word of the day. Yes, and the word of the day is... Origins. Origins. What a perfect word for what we're talking about today. And like... Walk us through, Sean, like explain for the viewers, like what do we mean by origins? Why is that the word of the day? Yeah, we're gonna talk some kind of old school fun code, just kind of from the beginnings and where we kind of started and what the inspirations were. And we brought a few old toys and toy lines that we've done in the past. And so thought we'd share some of those with you. And I'm hoping we, I think we have a guest coming by to talk a little bit about it. So I think they're gonna show up anytime. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Hey, hey guys. Hey, Rob. Rob. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Good to Love see it. you. Nice place. Yeah, you like this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Working on it. Yeah. All right, so this is Rob Schwartz, and uh, he's kind of was there at the beginning with, with myself and Mike yep. Becker in the early, early days. So yeah. we're excited to kind of go down, you know, nostalgia lane there a little bit and talk a little bit about what the beginnings were like. So, yeah, Rob, what do you got? I got a scrapbook of memory, Sean, uh, from back in the day. And, uh, yeah, what well, can I tell you? It's been a long trip, hasn't it? Yeah, so really excited to get you on here, Rob. I know the fans uh, would love to hear kind of about the old school days and sure. how it all started. And it was kind of me and you, uh, Art and it, with Mike Becker yep. kind of steering the uh, the boat. You know, talk to me a little bit about how you met Mike and what, what the sort of beginnings of your guys' connection were. Sure. Um, my first job at art school was at a place called Seabell Sportswear. Yeah, and uh, I worked there. It was a t-shirt company, sold like a, mainly boy stuff to Kmart. Classy, elegant garments like uh, <laughs> like this. Oh yeah, that's um, the influence. Oh, yeah, yep. and um, so uh, we were working there and then they said, hey, we got a young sales guy coming in. And I, I actually, I don't know why, I sat in on the interview and he came in and uh, he was this kind of a good looking guy in a band, kind of a kind of a styler and all like that and um, you know sales guy so then as he came around you know if he'd been there a bit like we kind of started hitting it off and uh I drove a actually this exact car a 59 <laughs> Dodge Coronet and he was uh said oh so you're really into this nostalgia type stuff and uh said yeah so we hit it off and he wanted being an excellent student and within a, a year or two he had the same exact car but a pink <laughs> station wagon and we would just I uh, remember that one yeah and he just got the bug and we would just go junking, swap meets, all that kind of stuff and just buy up all this nostalgic toys. Yeah, yeah and like, so that's interesting you brought up the junking and all that stuff because yeah. I know like even when I first started, that was something you and I talked about, Sean and I talked about. Yeah. How did that kind of influence like kind of some of the early products you guys made and just, you know, talk about that a little bit because I know that's yeah. super fascinating for me. Me and Becker tried a couple things before. We had a horror themed coffee shop. We almost opened called the Coffee Crypt. We'd done a lot of Soviet clothing and stuff, but we knew installs this thing we loved the most. So um, we literally went on a road trip one time just to buy stuff and just see America photographing old signs and all and said, we should do what we know. Let's do a nostalgia thing. So um, the first Funko really was, you look at the early catalogs, it's nothing but nostalgia. It's already kilowatts, yeah. speedy Alka-Seltzer, things like that. We couldn't even dream of affording licenses. Sean, you were always the kind of a comic book kind of guy and like Star Wars and right. it, it seemed like a fantasy that we'd ever do yeah, that kind no, of stuff. Yeah, it no, it, we were just yeah. all nostalgia and I know I got swallowed up into the yeah. nostalgia thing too and, and yeah. I was always a fan of the, the ad figures, etc. But you know, you guys took it to a new level and yeah. kind of made me realize what junking really can be and kind of the treasures you can find from your youth. And yeah. so, and I know that led to, and I know one of the great stories is, is Becker kind of have fighting that b the big boy's bobblehead yeah. and just and spending 100, 200, whatever. $900. Yeah. And just thinking, why is it so expensive? Why wouldn't people love this if it weren't $200? $900. For this paint chipped uh, big boy. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of led to our first, our first yeah. deal, our first bobblehead. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about those early days and that that first deal and kind of, yeah, give me a give me a rundown yeah. on that first year or two. Sure, um, the company was called Brainworks in the beginning and we were, by the way, at the t-shirt company then you came along. So Mike, you know, he's the guy running the thing, but he, he chose us as the two artists, but right. that big boy situation was he really wanted to get one uh, and he said, uh, let's make bobbleheads. That was one of many products, but that big boy took off and it was such a hit that he said, let's just keep making bobbleheads. And 
ad figures seem the way to go. Like we would call people that they couldn't even believe, like we don't use that character anymore. We go, yeah, I know, but we like it. Can we make it? And they'd go, I guess, you know, they were confused. Yeah, I, I feel like we kind of revitalized a yeah. lot of those characters and just the big interest in kind of retro and ad figure and all that kind of thing, yeah. right? There were no style guides. They would just like, okay, you know, and probably minimal money and we were over the moon. I mean, we'd hit something like Frank and Barry, we'd be like, God, we made it the big time, you know? Right. But um, early days were just, find an old catalog if you can, it's nothing but like 50s, 60s, 70s, forgotten, you know, right. ephemera, and then a lot of our own line too. So yeah, yeah, no, I know we did the sort of uh, bohemian guy, the little yeah. drummer dude, and and uh, yeah. the El Diablo yeah. and yeah. Bone Daddy, and those kind of things that are classic characters for Funko now. They're kind of the old school original dudes that started it all, and and you were a big part of those, and and sort of your influence. Yeah, I was a big monster guy, um, and um, so and I was kind of really into the rockabilly punk culture at the time. So a lot of our early stuff reflects that, and. As you know, we were kind of a snarky, smart-ass company, if I could say that. Um, <laughs> uh, we, uh, when we first had fans, we almost couldn't believe it. There's fans, so right. we had an award, and it was the Golden Underpants Award. And right. It was a pair of spray-painted gold underpants with glitter on them. Yeah, and our yeah. shipping boxes would have like, you know, chicken legs <laughs> and underpants and, yeah. and just the weirdest kind of stuff. Yeah, it was whimsical and weird. In fact, we made certain things, like you read the box of an old plastic ones, uh, they make no sense because we kind of want to almost confuse, like what? And uh, if I may mention this, like we were a five person company, so as a joke, we kind of pretended like we we're a corporation. So that's why we had Freddy Funko, which looked like a mascot out of the past. You know, nothing was uncooler at the time than a kid with a tucked in shirt <laughs> with a bow tie. So we went for this old school, but I made this sign as a joke that said, duty today for a funner tomorrow my salute to Devo, because I loved how they <laughs> never broke character, and they had duty now for the future, so that was my homage. But we, we had this joke of pretending, like, hey, wouldn't it be funny for a big corporation? Look and look at us now. I yeah. know. Now oh, you know what, like going back real quick, so you guys started with the ad figures, like you saw yeah. those. How did, how did this come about of like being able to do your own IP? Just because I know even now, as a size we are, it's a challenge sometimes to get that. How did you guys start that? And what did that, you know, how'd that look like? We knew we wanted to. And at the time, like, um, I was always into that car culture thing. And uh, I knew that Devils and Tiki's and stuff, and uh, that's kind of part of their mainstay. And then there was like um, Juxtapose yeah. Magazine and, and things like that. So there was a, there, it was a movement at the time. Nice. So uh, we knew it could hit. And it turned out there was a lot of people that wanted it. So. Yeah, we had, most of it was based on, like you say, that rockabilly car culture. Yeah, so. yeah and I mean, that kind of leads us to uh, Fantastic Plastic and, and a little bit on that the yeah. original IP stuff and just kind of that crazy monster yeah. kind of thing. And I, and I know you designed a ton of them, but it was quite a process. So talk a little bit about, about those, those good old days. Yeah, um, me and Sean would literally, there was a board, dozens of characters. Mike never picked the ones that we kind of watched. So like, oh, why that one? Like a beaver in his underpants, but now it's fun to think about. But yeah, so we had tons of sketches like this. Um, of just not really quick, but, right? But they were, you know, we just whatever we felt like, and yeah, some sold better than others. Molly Ringworm, not so much. <laughs> but uh, but uh, and we and he'd bring in all his kind of figures he'd buy at, at, at the junk shop yeah. and stuff, and just weird, obscure stuff that he'd kind of sit down and go, you know, like this or yeah. like this or. I keep remember that weird, annoying looking caveman that he just always wanted <laughs> yeah. a caveman, which we never quite figured out a Mike, caveman. We, we owe you a caveman. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we just made them in these tubes and they had, they had very silly backgrounds on them. And, you know, they didn't make the splash we hoped they would, but um, what, was, what killed us though is that it was a kind of single blow mold, so we couldn't, you know, moving arms and everything had to be tucked in. But, you know, that was the limits we had at the time, budget-wise and all. But m I did really like these days. Uh, we, would, we would try these things sometimes and and fail, but it's uh, like with some of the crazier products, which I'm sure you'll show here. Um, I love all the attempts we made till pop. Yeah, but I mean, um, whether it was triple treats or nodnicks or yeah. blocks or <laughs> wacky wisecracks. Yeah, a lot and of that. Well, I was gonna say. And the beginnings of before uh, the popsies, we had uh, peekaboo <laughs> Peek pop ups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these went nowhere, but. <laughs> But uh, but they were certainly fun to work on, and and it Very was much. the predecessor to to Popsies, which has been doing so great. So, and I know from the beginning that Brian bought the company. He was like, oh, I'm going to make something out of those. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, Yeah, okay, we'll we'll figure something out. And you know, sure enough, how many years later? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you know, it's sort of that message that, and and you know, I both probably have just files and files of old sketches and drawings and Tons ideas that. 
you know, they never really die. Nope. There's nope. always pull that idea and go, remember that thing? Yeah. Though this probably deserved to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, I'll got to say this for a minute. When we first got Brian, now we didn't know him that well, but um, he was a tornado of uh, just energy. And this was a product we made called the Triple Treat, which is, it's a card, it's a candy, it's a collectible. And uh, I would hear him on the phone making these cold calls, like going, we got the most amazing thing, you aren't gonna believe it. I'm so excited about this. You know, it'd be like, <laughs> and boy, that candy. And yeah, wow, I wouldn't. And it was, yeah, not very edible. But he, he tried and he really did believe in it. He pushed a lot of these things that are just, yeah. you know. And, that, and that's been the fun, right? Yeah. Is, is uh, you know, Becker kind of launched this thing and, and yeah. really built the, the nostalgic sort of vibe yeah. of it. But then Brian just kind of, yeah. kaboom, ran yeah. with that and made it the big thing it is and brought in the Star Warses and the Marvels and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And then I know that's kind of where your world shifted a little bit, right? Because yeah. um, I know, talk just a little bit about, I know you started with Mike at the Seabell days at the sportswear company we worked at and you were doing trade shows and stuff. So yeah. that kind of was the predecessor of kind of what you do now. So talk about that. So yeah. I. For some weird reason, I just got tired of the, being on the internet. I started just making dioramas, and people go, "What are you going to do with these?" You know, I, go, I don't know. I just want to make things again. And then Brian all of a sudden wants to make this store, and he's thinking, you know, uh, who's wants to do this? And you know, they're going to be like giant dioramas. I go, "Hey, uh, oddly enough, I've been doing this for a year." So he <laughs> it was gave a natural me, fit, and it was going to be this small thing. And then of course, he's Brian. He goes big or he goes home. And uh, I just want to see up on my crew here, which we call ourselves the Fun Lab. These guys, um. Um, they built both those stores, that in L.A. and Hollywood, in, in a year. Um, yeah. I don't, uh, don't want to do Miraculous. that again. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it just uh, it was an army of talented people. And uh, but I hope you like the stores. They're they kind of are the roadside attraction that we once. Yeah. I hope yeah. they're memories no, of other really people. No, they really are. So, yeah. When you yeah. saw giant dinosaurs and, and cowboy hats on yeah. restaurants and that kind of stuff, which is, as you said, kind of a dying thing, and it's sort of. Yeah, it does yeah. harken back to that, right? Yeah, and I'm really proud that they're free. Um, you can go there with your family, and it's, um, yeah, it's really been moving. It just uh, gets me kind of choked up as I've seen people enter there. Um, and he put this one, you know, the one in Everett in particular, Everett was a, is a scrappy working class town that really didn't have a big draw. And we put that in there and it, it I think it kind of changed the downtown. It's a destination. Yeah, definitely, definitely and um, yeah, it's it's been an honor because uh, Brian, boy, he, you know, he really, open up his wallet on that one because it was you know there's no guarantee that this yeah. was going to be a hit and uh, he said well we're only, if we only do it once let's do it right so yeah. yeah and it was such a blast watching you kind of build this stuff yeah. and all yeah. the weird places you'd find these parts for the factory <laughs> or whatever it's like well this is the front end of a the old truck and this yeah. is yeah. The, you know just the weird places that you dug just from those old days of junk hunting and all that right yeah I never lost that skill and that passion and and now you're check you out, kind of that, living it. Yeah, that that was fun. I mean, the one in LA in particular is like you know Volkswagen parts and <laughs> you know from a Vanagon roof and I mean all kinds of stuff. But because it's ready made to go, but I like it better than having even made something. Right. For instance, we went to this printer bars and we go, hey, what's that? And he goes, that is a piece of junk air conditioner that I bought for my mother, and they won't uh, they won't accept a return. And I go, can we have that? <laughs> now it's a robot, like in uh, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. It just you, we could see the beauty in it, but um, yeah, it's been fun to do that. Yeah. But let me talk about Sean for a sec here. What is Rob about to reveal about Sean's past? Is Ben smiling because he's about to learn the secret of a lifetime? Does this sleeve roll indicate a reckoning of sorts? Find out next week on part two of the Rob Schwartz interview on Inside the Artist Studios.